Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I'm Ruben Abati. I am OG Akbi. Our next guest is a Nigerian actress and an ambassador for Amnesty International. She will be discussing her career, the growth of the Nollywood industry, and how she has been able to balance her family life and her career. Welcome, Dakari. Oh, thank you for having <laughs> Hi, me. Dakari, good morning. Good, to see good you. morning. Gorgeous. Thank you. Oh. So are you? <laughs> and you, sir. <laughs> thank you. I love the combination. Thank you. I thought I'd just, you know, do a little something. Who is your something. stylist? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm actually self-styled today. No way. Oh, yeah. Good but this, job. Yeah, this is from um, Zinkata. Is it Nigerian? Are you wear Nigerian? I am Nigerian. wear Nigerian. Very have good. been all day, every day. I mean, why not? Our designs are amazing. Everything we do is amazing. We're just a blessed people. Well, Very congratulations good. Yeah. on. Uh, the success of his soccer oh, yes. at the uh, movie awards. Thank yes. you so much. Uh, you seem to have come back really strong. <laughs> By the into grace the of industry. God. <laughs> yes. yes. But more than 50 films yes. since 1999. If oh. you were to do a short list of your favorite ones that you have done, Ooh. which ones will you say, these are the ones that the films I did, participated in, and you That's know, I think pretty. they are evergreen. Oh. You know what? I've been very particular in my career with you know the roles that I've actually taken. So um, a lot of thought goes into the ones that I have been featured in. So I want to say all of them, but there are favorites, of course. There's Emotional Crack, which was like my breakout movie, um, and then of course Fifty more recently, and Isoke, of course. I mean, it's right up there. Yeah, talking about Isoke, mm -hmm. that movie went home with three nominate three awards. Yes, correct? it did. Yes, and um, I think most of it was. Um, Best actress. Were yeah, you nominated I was for that nominated. As well? Yes, and yes. And Lydia Forson went home with Lydia, that. Yes, Talk she went with uh, best supporting, yeah. and we also won best movie Africa, yeah. best director. Wow. I mean, the film has just—it's been amazing. People really responded to it positively. Um, they've given us so much love, and even for me to be nominated, I'm also nominated for an AMA award as well for the same movie, best actress in a drama. So it's just amazing. I'm just—it's such an amazing. Piece. And I think it's also really apt because a lot of women, you know, really responded to the film. Mm -hmm. The pressures, you know, the pressures of being a young woman who is successful yes. but isn't married yet. It's almost like a cardinal sin. So I think a lot of them, you know, keyed into it. And the men too as well because mm -hmm. men also have their own pressures as well. You know, like, oh, you're a certain age, you should, you know, you should get married. And mm -hmm. maybe he's not ready or, you know, so I think a lot of people resonated with them. So. Were you part of the pr production? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was the lead well, actor. When you are given a script yeah. and you're invited to be part of the production, mm -hmm. yeah. what are the things you look out for in a script that will determine whether you will take it or not? You know, it's a very instinctive thing. You know, sometimes the character just jumps out at you. Sometimes it's a slow burn. Mm. It really depends, you know, but it's about me just connecting with the character enough and not having, not, not feeling like I can rest if I'm not a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, the energy that I tend to get. And when I feel those butterflies and I know that, yeah, this is, this is, this is something I need to be a part of. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the AMCA, the MVC again. Yeah. The movie uh, that won the most awards was Tattoo, correct? Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. they won for uh, best lighting, best yes. sound, yeah, and time. best editing. Mm -hmm. These are all genres that are very, um, important in in, not, in making a film, a film correct? Yeah. But, you know, I had a conversation recently with a, a makeup artist. Okay. Uh, actually, I think that she's um, she does uh, special effects makeup. Okay. And she talked to me about the challenges that they face, and they're not included in the financial budget of uh, making a film. Talk to us about that. Well, I think it depends on the production. You know, um, different productions have different budgets. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's a smaller production, of course, those things might not be on the, you know, at the forefront of mm -hmm. what they're trying to do. But for me, I've been part of productions where makeup and lighting and all of those things are really important. So it really depends on you as the actor you have to look at the production values and the people who are behind mm -hmm. the production because that really is where you will be able to get a difference in terms of what is important to them. Um, if you have a five million naira budget, of course, makeup might be a little lower on, this, on the list. Yeah. But if you have a 50 million, 100 million like that, which is a lot of the productions that we're having now, whereas on, you know, before in older Nollywood, you didn't have much of that. So there's been a lot of growth. So it really depends on her. Maybe she should be looking out for Well, no, it's like a general statement that she oh. made. Yes. Okay. That's well, why I asked you if you were part of the production of, of Isaka, where you um, oh, did you. Um, Add money to make the film. Oh no 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 no! I just came in as a yeah as a lead. Okay, so you have have you done any films? 
that you would have to say that you're part of it, you made it, you brought money oh, to no, it? Oh, no, no, not yet. Okay, so yeah. you're not familiar with that part no, of the industry No, well, I mean, yet. I've been in the industry for 20-something yeah. years, so I'm very much aware of what's going on yes. and, you know, what obtains. Um, and honestly, I, that, and I'm talking from my own personal okay. experience, um, they're different movies, different budgets, so it's really up to whoever is in the film or who wants to be part of the production mm -hmm. to make sure that they're in those, you know, or talking to those people who see the value. Okay. Because it's a value thing. If you don't see the value, you're not going to put money towards it. So, okay. yeah. You sing, you write poetry, yes. you act. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you feel more comfortable with uh, acting. Actually, it's, it's what just came my way, you know. Um, if it was down to me, I'd be a musician. That was really where, wow. you know, I started from performing in the UK, you know, at the Royal Festival Hall, the Queen Elizabeth Hall. So I was very sure that this was where I was going. But acting also was something that I was also passionate about and good at. And the more work that came, the more and more it just kind of grew. And I kind of shifted a little bit from the music. But we'll see. We'll see whether I get a chance to do it another okay. time around. Yeah. At one time, you took a break, right? I sure okay. did. I, I'm not very <laughs> familiar with that story. Can okay. you share with us what happened? Well, it was just life. You know, yes. life happens. And um, I met a wonderful young man. And we okay. decided to, you know, be together and got married and had children. And that, of course, took me away from the limelight. How long was that? It was about four years, four and a half years. Oh, that's not long. Well, I mean, in, a, in entertainment, it's a long time. You yeah. know, some people when go away and never come the back. Nice baby bump? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm on a break for now, I would say. I'm enjoying my two little girls. I mean, they're seven and four, you know, yes. so they're, they keep me busy. But you uh -huh. see, sometimes when I see you on screen, I get a bit, uh, you know, um, Stopped. Oh, really? Yeah, Why? You know, you know, those of us who belong to the uh, Association of Busybody uh, <laughs> Uncles and In Laws, when I see you playing romantic parts uh -huh. in films, and another man is kissing you, uh -huh. and I say, No, no, that is our wife. Don't touch her. <laughs> how, how, how does your husband cope? Uh -huh. He comes pretty well. I mean, I must kudos to him, man. You know, I think it's about understanding, um, and he knows that this is what I do. It's tough, don't get me wrong. Um, we, it's, it's, a, it's a fluid thing, you know, but um, I'm just very, I just have to do what I have to do, depending on the role. And, you know, you want to do justice to the character, and but he understands that. Is it not possible that. to reject uh, romantic parts? I have done, you know, quite a bit, but I was missing out on a lot of work yeah. as a result. So, you know, you have to make a choice and say, you know what, I want to be in the game. I want to be able to do what I need to do. You have a new series out now, correct? I do. And that involves a lot of... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, but they're, I play a married couple, we're a married okay. couple. Married people kiss, married yeah. people fondle each other. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's part of the, the bringing the character to life. Yeah. And you know, we do our job and we leave it. It's a job like anything else, yeah. you know, but because it's film, you know, people get really like, you know, personal about it. It's like a, a plumber saying he doesn't like to work with his hammer. I mean, there's no way that's gonna, uh, sorry, a, a carpenter saying yeah. he doesn't want to work with the hammer. You know, you have to do what you have to do. Okay. But do you feel yeah. that sometimes the directors that approach you, they, they stereotype you, that these are the kinds of roles they think you, you um, must play? Yeah, a little bit, um, but it's okay. It means that I'm, I do something very well, that they always want to associate with, you know, with me. But I think it's also my job as an actor to show my versatility um, and do other kind of movies as well so they can actually see me in those roles. And that's a real big reason why a lot of actors have become producers because you know, you're waiting around for that role and it doesn't come, then you can create it. And that's the beauty of it. I'm actually working on my first feature, so it's funny Very that you nice, were talking yes. about that. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's really like you know, it, it, a personal thing. You know? So yeah. what's that process? Where are you at? It's that? amazing. Uh, we've done like, maybe I'm like on my seventh draft. Um, okay. I have a writer in oh, you're LA. Just in the writing yeah, the writing, phase. but it's also, okay. you know, casting, putting everything together. So it's pre production at the okay. moment. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting. It's nerve wracking. Yeah. It's, um, but you know, it's, it's progression and yeah. it's all about timing. And I, I never do things under pressure or under, <laughs> under anyone else's uh, timetable. You know, you have to go with your natural flow. Um, and I'm enjoying the process. Okay, I mean, talk yeah. to us about Amnesty International. Well, Amnesty International is actually the first um, non-governmental organization that I ever worked with. They approached me uh, for uh, control against arms and ammunition, you know, 
because you know, I'm from the Niger Delta, I guess they felt that it would be someone who would understand the, the challenges and stuff. But I've actually moved on from Amnesty International. I'm now with Action Aid Nigeria. Okay. And um, we're an organization that also tries to raise money from within our own country to help our people because I believe that a lot of Nigerians are very generous, they, but they want to know that wherever they're putting their money to is going to yield the results. Because you see a lot of, you hear about a lot of NGOs that kind of just, you know, siphon money for their own personal reasons, but Action Aid actually are very, um, you know, you, you, can, you can count on them. They give you reports. They let you know that, okay, the money towards this borehole is at this particular point, you know, and so it encourages you to give more. And it's just a little, it's like 2,000 naira a month, you know, so that's 24,000 a year. And you're helping to build schools and build roads and, you know, build How can people get things. involved? Yeah, so just go online, www.actionaid.org mm -hmm. forward slash community sponsorship. And that's, that's the, the area that I, I kind of um, really spearhead because I believe that we have the capacity to raise money from within our own. We should stop you know, just looking at oh, always trying to look to Very the nice. West and get aid from Very the nice. West. We can do it ourselves. Let's talk about Nollywood. Yes. I know you've been there for a number of years. Yes. What are the things you like about Nollywood? What are the things you see in the industry that you don't like? What I like, let me start with the positive. What yes. I like is the fact that it's just homegrown. It's real. It's us in our own element. Um, we're telling our own stories. You know, we're, we're telling people, we're telling the world who we are and why we are the way we are. Um, in our own words. And I feel like the world hasn't um, been too kind to us in terms of always, you know, projecting the negative, always the, the sad, you know, the, the wars and the, you know, all the negative stuff is always attributed to Africa. So I like the fact that we're able to create our own narrative. Mm -hmm. um, what I don't like, <laughs> I guess, would be the way that actors, in fact, not just actors, but film pr practitioners are um, not really taken care of by the industry um, in terms of like, you see when actors are ill, they fall ill maybe when they're older and they don't have any support, they don't have any insurance, they don't have, um, so I would like to see a Nollywood yes. where people are really well taken care of, you know, like the Screen Actors Guild in, in the US, for instance, they look out for their actors, you know, make sure their contract. Uh, I'd love the Actors Guild as well to just do a little more for, for the actors because we, we give a lot, you know, mm -hmm. not just actors, directors, you know, the technical people. I mean, we work on godly hours, you know, like it looks very glamorous and yes. stuff, but it's a whole lot of sacrifice, you know, being away from your family. So it would be nice to really get the returns for what we do because we, right. we break well, our, our I, backs. I read uh, Fela's book, a book on Fela. Okay. Um, and there was this woman that he met who yes. changed the course of his Sandra career. Sandra Isidore. Yes, mm -hmm. and you know, you also met the woman. I am very so, close to her. Yeah, so I was excited to say, <laughs> I mean, this woman that. Transform for life, if mm -hmm. I mean, use that word. Yes. Uh, tell, tell me a little about her. You know, I've always admired her. I'm a huge Fela fan, huge, yeah. unashamed. I, you know, I love it. You were at Felabration, right? I was at Felabration. Yes. I always, anytime there's anything to do with Fela, I mm -hmm. represent um, because I love what he stood for, you know, mm -hmm. and the person, and then to meet the person who actually got him on that path was like mind blowing. I went to Los Angeles, this was like 2007, for an awards. It was a whole bunch of us, Genevieve, Ramsey, all of us. And um, she came to one of the events and we met and we just hit it off like a house on fire and we've been friends ever since. She's also helped to emancipate me as well, you know, just make me realize and love being black mm -hmm. and also understanding the black American experience as well because I think that's something a lot of Africans don't understand, okay. you know, so she kind of really opened my eyes to that. And she's an amazing woman. I've done music with her, you know, our families are close. Wow. Yeah, she's an amazing person. She's like my godmother in LA. She looks after me. All right. Well, yeah. who are your role models mm -hmm. wow. in this line of business? In this line of business, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to step aside a little bit and say my mom, because <laughs> yeah. she's always supported me. She's never said, oh, no, Dakar, you can't do that. She's always said, go for it, girl, yes. you got it. And having that as a mom um, and a daughter, you know, it really helps to boost you. So when you go out into the world, you have, you have that safety net. Um, but of course, I would say Sandra is the door, of course. She, I always look, look up to her. Um, I love Jokes Silva. Taiwa Jailai said, these are the women that, you know, Ruth Benamisia, Opia, uh, you know, Bimbo Loye Day. These are the women that I grew up watching on television and saying, oh, I'd love to be like this. I'd love, I love what they're doing. Um, and I studied mass communication and I understand journalism. I understand what we're doing, the power of what we're doing. So it's women like that that I kind of resonate with. How do you juggle the balls? I mean, you're yeah. a mother, you're mother, a singer, oh my God. you're an actress. You have no idea. And you go to locations. And, and 
For days, you know, and all that. For months, even. I saw Do you that. go with the girls, or no, I you leave just them leave them with the nanny? Yeah, with daddy and grandma and the nannies, yes. So I you have, have to. help. You have like I have nice help. I have a uh, tribe. Okay. It takes a tribe to so take that, care of children so that and have a career. Yeah. No, of course, but it's still tough. It's yeah. still, you know, you still have guilt. Yeah. You know, I have guilt sometimes, like, oh, my husband, he hasn't seen me in a while, or my kids, you know. But we thank God for FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> so do, do, you, do you really have to work? <laughs> I mean, yes, your, I do. Your, your husband is from oh, a comfortable oh. background. Yes. Uh, Chief Aria Conde, your yes. father in law is, uh, yes. you know. I mean, why don't you just sit at home and have fun? I don't I'm want to do that. Chair. But you know, it's my choice. I love to work. I grew up working. I, yes. I enjoy making my own impact okay. in the world, making my own money. So, of course, why not? Let's hey. circle back to Nollywood, right? Nollywood, um, Nollywood. So, you know about like the disgrace. Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein and the Ooh, whole Me Too movement started, correct? <laughs> yes. So tell us the challenges that you guys face here in Nollywood. Do you guys have like a, a thing with the Me Too movement as well? Oh, of course. I mean, I'm not sure if it's like the, it's like a you know calculated effort mm -hmm. or anything, but I'm sure it, res it resonates, of course. Um, but personally, I've not experienced. I mean, I experienced it maybe once in my career, um, but I was very blessed because I came in with female producers. Okay. So by the time I was known, I was already in a step. You know. People knew that okay, this girl can act. So it's either okay, let's just give her work. Mm -hmm. Not, and then I think because I didn't approach it in a desperate way, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people sometimes get preyed on because of that desperation, and people can smell it. Yeah. You know, so it's about respecting yourself, loving yourself, believing yourself. I've never had to trade favors for anything. So in my have career, you heard any stories that. from your co Oh yeah, so. of course. I mean, there are stories, but I think sometimes it's also about how you, you know, how you handle yourself as a woman. You know, in this industry, you have to. To just have your scruples and be into, have integrity and you know I think so I can't say personally it's happened to me in a way like oh it was terrible or mm -hmm. you know but if I know it happens and that is wrong that in and of itself is wrong because it's an abuse of power mm -hmm. just because you're in a position to what help do think, someone. Do you think that actresses would come out and talk about this since the I'm not sure is, that because we because of I'm, our culture because of our correct? culture yeah. our culture is so I mean already actors were under so much scrutiny and yes. ex the expectation and everything so to actually come out and say it mm -hmm. you know would probably be that be a lot of negative you know backlash first would probably you like to? would I like yes, to personally even like yeah I mean if it happened to me oh yeah, yeah. definitely okay. I mean it did happen once mm -hmm. um, you know but he I let him know that hey it's not that kind of party you know okay. and he was like oh, okay and then I had dreadlocks too so people were kind of scared of <laughs> yeah, me what happened to your, <laughs> no, your like, she cray cray you know what happened to your locks um, are I, we going to see them back you again probably someday? will they will be featuring because really? wow. my hair is natural even though I cut off the locks I, I mean, love this look though. I thank you you know I love to be able to be versatile yeah. you know because I think the locks too had a negative connotation Yes. unfortunately but that is changing and I'm yes. so glad to have been at the forefront of that because they just see oh you have locks you must be a bad girl you must be but you must play the bad role mm -hmm. so that was getting in the way a little bit so I had to cut the hair off and say hey I can be whoever I you want you me to change, be you, you change the chameleon. Yes. <laughs> and the piracy how much yes. of a threat do you think that poses to it's, it's, it's one of the hugest threats we have, honestly. You know, it's part of why it's taken me a long time to actually be part of the film in, in terms of production because yeah. you put in so much. I, I've been so much a part of productions where people lose so much money, lose so much of their income because mm -hmm. of piracy. So it's scary. It's actually, yes. and unfortunately, nothing is really being done. You know, I mean, you see your film before, you know, unless you have to, you have the financial resources to be able to, Put those checks in your film so it doesn't get out like 50 like mm. Moabudu did with yeah, 50. 50 yes. it took almost two years before it hit the you know because before it wow, hit that, that mm. yeah so kudos to her but not everybody has that ability mm. because we're most of us we do this thing for passion you know it's a love thing you know so to see that go down the drain because our government is not supporting enough to make sure that there's an enforcement of the law because there are laws against this, but Certainly. it's just not properly Copyright enforced. Laws. You know, so the film industry needs support. We actually need support. We're not getting it. I feel like the government uses us more to just kind of say, hey, you know, we've got a film industry and we've got, you know, but those are the things we actually need. Policy needs to change, and that's the only way it's going to ever get better. Right. Now, I've asked someone this question before. She dodged it. <laughs> oh. How much do you charge? Oh, Pascal? my God. <laughs> <laughs> People may like to know, they would like to know how expensive, how affordable. I would say I'm affordable. Yeah. Um, people are scared. Like how though. much? How much? Oh, God. <laughs> A few millions. Millions? A few millions, yeah. Huh? 
course. Okay, well, like how much? Oh my goodness. I, I'll, leave, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I, I, I was kind, wasn't I? Very, very kind. Okay, talk, let it, um, talk to him about I, so I can't it. even talk. I love it. Guy. I love it. He's like. <laughs> All a right. few millions. How did you become decorated? Tell us the inspiration and everything. Oh, wow. How would how would an actress uh, how would anyone want to become decorated? Oh gosh, um, you know what? Just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Um, you know, find yeah. that thing that you're passionate about yeah. and go for it. That's well, what I did. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, very you very much so much for having really me. Oh gosh, me day. too. Thanks a lot. Well, that thank brings you. us to the end of the morning show today. Thank you for watching from our entire team here in Lagos. Enjoy the rest of your morning and of course the rest of your day goodbye goodbye